there are two or three components to your question. First of all, about Remdesivir. Um, we should be clear, and the government has communicated this also, that Remdesivir should be taken upon hospitalization um, under doctor's advice and prescription only. It has a benefit of perhaps extend, uh, uh, reducing hospital stay by a few days. And therefore, panic buying and uh, pushing doctors to prescribe is not good, and that message has gone across. So that's one point. Uh, the second part of your question was about the surge and you know uh, about um, uh, vaccine availability. Method. Is that right? That the, the, the treatment, treatment method, sorry. essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The treatment methods, by and large, have been so much better than what we had a year ago, and because of that experience, we know now that about eighty percent of people who are positive are either asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms and don't need to be hospitalized. Lying prone and breathing deeply can help these people substantially. Those who are hospitalized again can be treated with oxygen uh, and other uh, um, you know, uh, treatments such as dexamethasone and you know, ventilators are required for a smaller fraction. And of course, there are some people who have serious presentations. So all of this has been learned a lot and the hospital situation in terms of treatment is much better. Because of the very large number of cases because of the surge, we are seeing hospitals being uh, really overwhelmed. And that is a challenge which we must address and we are addressing by expanding the numbers of healthcare workers who are available, moving them from one location to another, and also setting up emergency hospitals by the Defense R&D um, organization, for example. Right. Now, that's one part of the story, and it's alarming uh, to see the numbers go up. But the other part of the story is a vaccination drive. And I'm given to understand that uh, some um, supplies have been booked for Johnson & Johnson, uh, especially amid all that uh, uh, the vaccine maker is going through in the U.S. in terms of combating um, risks with regards to blood clots. Uh, and on the same hand, you're also uh, getting supplies of Sputnik V from Russia. So how is the vaccination position in India right now? How is that uh, process playing out? Right. So let's take each of those separately. The Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine has been approved for emergency use elsewhere. And according to our new um, uh, flexible uh, regulations now, once they are approved by a rigorous regulator elsewhere, they can be brought in here for sale or manufacture. And that is what will happen. The Concerns you expressed about some uh, J &J, uh, about the J&J vaccine, um, those will of course always be examined by regulators to see. Right now, those are of a minuscule uh, frequency in certain age groups, and therefore those will also be addressed while they uh, come in. Um, that, that's of course there. Now the Sputnik vaccine, the trials uh, were also done in India, and those had even before the flexible regulations of a few days ago, had already been given emergency use authorization for manufacture in India. So these vaccines can be manufactured in India and imported. And indeed, the Johnson & Johnson vac uh, already has a tie-up with a company in India, Biological E, for large-scale manufacture. So the max vaccine supply situation, in other words, will ramp up right away and improve over the next couple of months.